This is William K. Murta, Mert Witness 1. And today I'm going to discuss Timothy Charles Holmes Seth and an allegation he made against me once again on his blog. Now, Timothy Charles Holmes Seth claims that I am part of some pedophile ring and now I'm a spokesman for Montagraph after being a spokesman for Pim Kim Bacasio. And he brings up the infamous chat, as it's been known over the years. This is probably the tenth time Tim Holmseth has brought this thing up. And unfortunately for Tim, uh, the whole thing has been debunked time and again over the years. And it's time to debunk it once again. Now, Tim Holmseth is supposed to be a journalist. And you would think, as a journalist, that Tim Holmseth would want to get enough detail to confirm what is reporting is true, or at least believable, and he doesn't do it. Now, he puts in a few facts in there, or details, they're not facts, they're details, and if you break down these details, you'll find something rather interesting. Now, I'm going to give you a little background as to how these chats came about. Now, I first started being online about missing children with the Jessica Lunsford case. And that part doesn't bring much news because not much happened. Basically, I would go on to chat rooms, forums, and like everybody else out there, I would, you know read what was being discussed about the case, maybe make a comment or two, but no big deal. You know, I didn't go to the scene, take pictures, or do any coverage of any kind. And back then, I was just, like everybody else, interested in what happened to the child. Eventually, uh, the case was solved, and that was it. And then, Tretton Duckett happened. When the Trenton Trent Duckett case came about, all hell broke loose, quite literally. Uh, the Trenton Duckett case uh, was of great interest to the public because it was a mother who lost her child. Um, and because of certain things that happened in that case, it became national. And everybody joined in on the fray. Now, at that time, I had become a little bit more active in the chats. Uh, I did a couple things that I probably should not have in hindsight. Other people had done the same thing I did and gotten away with it. But being in the being in the retail business, I knew how to promote things, and it backfired on me. And I learned my lesson. I owned up to my mistake. Life went on. And then, Kale Anthony disappeared. And this was in Orlando, where I was living in a suburb. I was living in Sorrento, Florida, which is about 20 minutes from the uh, Anthony house. So, it was a local case. And by that time, I had developed technology to live stream from my car. Now... Back then, people weren't doing this. <coughs> people were not live streaming mobile live from a car. And they didn't have a chat combined with it. The equipment back in those days made it both difficult and expensive. The cell, cell phone coverage was spotty at best in most areas. I was fortunate. Orlando had a little bit better system. We were in G3 around that time. Um, and so, it, except for the occasional dropouts, I was largely able to conduct an active live stream over the internet. It was expensive as hell. I, it cost me $1,000 a month by the time I paid all the bills off for it. Is that, you know, I did two months in the field, so to speak, and so I paid $1,000 a month for two months for the coverage, plus the cost of the equipment, 
uh, the repairs to my live truck, which had just come off lease inventory at the time, and everything else. I figured I probably had about $5,000 tied up in this stuff by the time it all ended. But I didn't charge a subscription. I didn't have a pal. I didn't have a uh, PayPal account or PayPal page specifically for this sort of thing. So I was providing this for free. I was not making a dime off of this. Other people accused me of that, but it, that wasn't the case. You know, not that I didn't have the right to do it. I just wasn't doing it. Anyway, so in the midst of all this. Someone had done some online detective work and found out that the sister of one of my moderators was an unregistered sex offender. Now, the individual was also a moderator over on Useless, which is the king of the hell when it comes to true crime forms. And, naturally, all hell broke loose. You know, how could the administrator of web sleuth have a woman on there that's a sex offender and guilty of some horrific crimes and the answer quite simply if anybody had bothered to check into it was that the woman involved was an unregistered sex offender now this incident with this woman had happened before the Jessica Lunsford law which required all sex offenders after that date be registered. So that if you had a sex offender that was living next door, which is what had happened in the Lunsford case, people would have the right to know that. And so this woman fell through the cracks. It wasn't the administrator of Web Sleuth's fault. It just happened because normally people don't do thorough background checks of people that they have volunteered to administer a, a forum thread, which was the case here. It was just one of these stupid things that somebody seized on to make problems for the administrator, for the owner of the website. Well, the sister, who was my moderator, got mad, got on my live stream and went into a rage and said that these very young children were lying that they were under pressure by their grandfather to lie about this incident and when I found out about it I said you do not have permission to talk about this case on my show this is strictly about Kelly Anthony you know this is my live stream, I'm going to run it the way I please, and I'm not going to allow you to do this on my live stream. And she got mad, and the discussion stopped. There was no more discussion about the sister on my show. That had put a stop to it. But, this had turned these three, this turned the sister, my administrator, and another woman against me, because they all believed the child lied. These two children lied, which for the life of me, I don't know why they took this path, except they were simply the friend of the sister. Uh, my administrator was a grandmother of a newborn. I would have thought that she understood that you can't have this kind of person running around, and you certainly can't be defending this person on a show about a missing child. But, you know, I guess cons common sense doesn't dictate people when it's a friend of theirs to get involved in this sort of thing. So within an extremely short period of time, this chat mysteriously shows up. And the only problem with the chat is it's a fraud. I never partook in a conversation with the people in there. Now, prior to this chat showing up, someone kept coming into my room and kept wanting to engage me, and it was a person that went by KFC Fan, and another one showed up, Renzo sh Loves Cake, and then an, all of a sudden you had people using uh, 
weird usernames where it was a letter number combination and they basically just went to town screwing around with the chat you know flooding it with statements and messages and everything making it impossible for anybody to chat freely and it really began to be a nuisance now the You know, eventually, after I went to the law enforcement about this, it stopped. Eventually, after an investigation, somebody was arrested on an unrelated criminal offense. The person that was alleged to have helped create the fake chat created a blog and confessed to the whole thing and apologized to me in a letter for doing so. Now... All this happened before I even heard of Timothy Charles Holmeseth. Because Timothy Charles Holmeseth wasn't active in this sort of thing until Haley Cummings. Now this is the part where Timothy Holmeseth leaves out a few facts. Now Timothy Holmeseth stated in this latest rant against me that these chats took place on Pal Talk. And this was about Trenton Duckett. There's this problem. The Trenton Duckett case was in 2006. And the case was pretty much over with within a short period of time. Because the mother committed suicide, the child remains missing to this day, and it basically is a cold case. And when Casey Anthony case came about, Attention shifted to Kaylee Anthony. Now, when I started live streaming, I eventually signed up with Ustream. Was Ustream for a short period of time? Was offered Pal Talk and went over to Pal Talk. At no time did I ever live stream during the Trenton Duckett case. So, what Timothy Charles Holmeseth is stating is false. Because I was not on Pal Talk until three months after the beginning of my live stream. I had started in late August. This is November. So, it's was a little over three months. Now, the very first time that Timothy Charles Holmeseth discussed these chats, which was in 2009, 2010, he was made aware of the facts. He was given written evidence of the facts. He was given contact information to all three law enforcement agencies to discuss with them the facts. Holmeseth never bothered. He said, I'm not a detective. I'm not going to look into it. But what's an investigative reporter? You're investigating. That makes you a detective of one kind or another. But he completely disregarded any exculpatory evidence that would clear this matter up. And this is how Holmeseth works. There are sources of information out there that Timothy Charles Holmeseth could access to debunk his claims or to at least offer a counter-argument and he refuses to do any of it. He comes up with excuses. And you can look. If you go back 10 years to the very start of Holmeseth's coverage, if you want to call it that, of the Cummings case, all the blogs he's written, all the Twitter accounts he's put up, and what videos you can find that weren't deleted, you would see that he has absolutely disregarded anything that goes against his narrative. You know, he's one of the earliest 
deniers of what he would call fake news. That's his excuse. He says this is all fake. You know, he, in his surprising statement that he made once to me, was that the letter to me explaining how the chats were made are fake, yet the chats are real. And he doesn't provide any basis for this. He doesn't provide why one set of documents would be fake and the other wouldn't. He just, anything that absolves me of any action, he instantly debunks. And this is what Holmes does. He's one-sided. He's extremely biased. And he will not budge on anything. And when he is called to task, like he was during the Goodman show, he lashes out. And he's lashed out with these fake chats for the 11th time. Now, I... I basically have stated my case time and again, and once again I'm doing it. And the only thing I can say is everybody is free to go out there. This stuff is all over the internet. You know, you're not going to get rid of it. And the chats are out there. Timothy's claims and the claims of another among a number of people are out there. And so, if you want to believe that I'm the sort of person that would talk like that about a child, then so be it. You know, it's like I've said before, you know, Timothy Holmes says, and those he supports, including pedophiles, have destroyed me. You know, I have nothing to gain by countering his accusations because I'm already ruined. I lost a 300 million, you know, excuse me, I lost a $3 million a year business because of actions of people like Timothy Holmes said. My dealership was generating an, a living for me and seven other people. You know, I had myself, two, a manager, a salesman, and mechanics. And all these people lost that income. Uh, one person lost his house because of this, because when I had to lay the person off, they couldn't find a job in time to keep up with their mortgage, and they lost their house. You know, and so you can thank... Tim Holmseth for making an innocent victim in all this for losing his house. And, you know, this created upheaval for the other people that worked for me. They lost, you know, it took them a while to find a job. Because this was bad timing. We were going through the middle of a recession in 2008. This is when the housing market collapsed and all this rigmarole happened. Nobody was buying cars. Nobody was buying anything. People were losing jobs left and right. And so when all these people, including me, lost our sources of income, it was hard to find work. I lost my house over it. I had a, I had a modest custom-built house that I built. Lost that. You know... The year my wife died, I lost my house and my business. Nice Christmas present from uh, Timothy Holmseth. You know, this is the kind of damage that, be, that can be done by people that dispense this kind of false information. You know, and people that defenses, uh, dispense this false information also pay the price. Now, Phil McConnell is in jail. And Phil McConnell is in jail because he believed Timothy Holmseth. Timothy, Phil McConnell decided to take Timothy Holmes' narrative and run with it. And this is what happens when this sort of thing develops. You go around and start playing games with people's lives, people lose. You might lose, but other people are going to lose as well. There's no winners. There's no winners in any of this. My purpose of going after Tim Holmseth and getting him to quit doing the smear campaigns on the internet is so nobody else has their life screwed up like he screwed up mine and others. Because the things you do can't be reversed. You can't go on the internet and say, oh my bad, that's not going to erase 11 years of torment. It's not going to erase 
a destruction of a way of making a living, and it's not going to erase the destruction of a reputation. The destruction has already happened. It can't be rebuilt. You know, I'm 69 years old. I can't, I can't start over again. I don't have the resources. It took me 40 years to build up where I was when all this went down. You know, 40, 40 years of hard work went out the window because I decided to do a live stream. This is the price you pay for caring about something. You know, if I if I had known now, back when I started all this, I would have stayed off the internet. I would have run my business and not paid attention to any of all this. Timothy Charles Holmeseth doesn't understand that. Timothy Charles Holmeseth is heartless. He doesn't care about anyone but himself. And he cares nothing about anyone else other than he wants revenge. And as to the specifics of why Timothy Holmeseth wants this revenge, we are going to get into, in my series, The Flood of Noah. For the true motives of Timothy Charles Holmeseth is going to come out. And people can understand what makes this man do what he does. And then you can decide for yourself who's right and who's wrong. This is William K. Murtaugh. Martin Witness 1. Have a good one.